Rosebud Homestead. Today we are going to make our own wonder bag and we're going to bake some bread in it. And so we have a lot to do, so we better get started in just a moment. I've been doing quite a bit of research on the concept of wonder bags. I've even had a couple of our subscribers make comments about the origin and they were absolutely right. The origin of these wonder bags it, it did not just occur in recent years. This is a very old, old idea. In fact, in this country it first started as what was known then as a hay box where they would just take a wooden box, fill it with hay or straw, put a pan down in with ingredients on the inside, fill it with straw, cover it over, and then just let it sit until the ingredients were done. So if we think about the basic principles, the scientific principles behind what a Wonder Bag does, it's just all about insulation and keeping the temperature uh, from cooling down. So there are lots of ways that we can do that. This Wonder Bag, I know that some of you have seen the video that we presented last week on how we use this to make um, some soup. And this one is a lovely designed. And so this has little pockets of styrofoam beads. And these are the styrofoam beads. I felt like if this one had styrofoam beads, that I was also going to use styrofoam beads. I can tell you right now, I don't think I will ever do that again. And I'll share that. I will share with you why that is the case. You'll probably see some of that action uh, right in this video. But this is a lovely, lovely design. And uh, the, the only drawback to this one is its size because whatever you are, uh, whatever pan you are using to fit down inside has to fit inside. And as you can see, this one does not, um, is not very large. I was able to make bread in this one last week just as a trial run, but the only thing that would fit in the pan that I use for this is pint-sized jars. So we had these little tiny loaves of bread that were pint-sized loaves of bread. They were actually pretty cute and they made great toast. So I've decided that I wanted to make a larger one. If we think about the principles behind this, they don't all have to be designed exactly like this, of course. I'm gonna set this one aside because the idea is we just want an enclosed space that is insulated, that will keep a pan uh, nice and insulated. So I just decided to experiment on my own. And I know that there are lots of patterns out there for wonder bags, but um, I've been sewing for so many years that I really don't need a pattern. I really like to use, reuse, refurbish uh, things that I already have on hand. So I had this old twin sheet that I've had on our shelf for years, we don't even have a twin bed anymore. And so um, I used it to make this kind of a design of a wonder bag or wonder box, whatever we want to call it. Now, the design does not have to be all in one piece like that one is with a second piece for a lid. You can have as many pieces as you want. You could even stuff feather pillows around it to keep it well insulated. We all know that down is uh, down, goose down is a very great insulator. Um, but I used this, the styrofoam beads. And so this is a pillowcase. So if you have two or three old pillowcases and want to fill those with some kind of a filling uh, that would insulate, then do it. So I cut the, both the top, the bottom end off so that I could sew this center seam and then fill from both sides. Now, why do we put seams anyway? Why don't we just do it like this? Well, the reason is because these little balls, look at this, this would not be insulating at all. But, and this is too much insulation. Um, the suggestions of everything that I read in my, oh, God, there goes some more of the bees. Any little breeze sends them scattering. Um, and so I was thinking about the purpose that I wanted for each piece. Now this piece is going to go on the bottom. This is what the, the pan will sit on. 
And the suggestions from my research are that you should have at least a good two inches of beads uh, for the best insulation. And so knowing that this one was just going to lie flat, I didn't put any um, cross seams in that at all. However, this one is going to go over the top and down the side. And so I wanted two things. The seam here is so that it will easily fold right in that place. The seams here and here are to keep the beads from migrating so much that I don't have insulation where I need it. Now the trick to doing these is to not pack the insulation so tight that you don't have movement. Now this is packed tighter than the one I'm going to show you in just a minute because it is only going to just go in two planes, top, side. And so these could have more in, in and be a little bit stiffer. So I'm going to set this one aside and show you this one. Now this one was just cut a, a long piece out of that sheet and then I uh, have sewn it and it is what is going to go around the pot. Now <clears throat> I made this one first and I made it in a smaller pan and for, to fit a smaller pan. And um, then when I decided to use a larger pan, there is now a gap where it fits around the pan, oops, but it doesn't go all the way. So that's why I made that other piece so that it goes on the top and down the side so I've got coverage. And so this is versatile, I can use it with several different size pots. But um, we had quite a time getting this filled and I'll tell you, it took both of us. And I did use my canning funnel um, to try to get these little beads down in. I have left the top side for uh, our demonstration today. So actually what I want to do is get this other piece back over here and I'm going to flop this up like this and I'm going to get a, this Clorox bottle and put here right behind it so maybe th these will stand up and I can show you. Now these are not all the way full. Um, the bottom sections of these have only about, when it's out flat, about two inches because they need to curve and they need to form an arc and if you get too many in here, they're stiff and they won't bend at all. So that's why these are quite loose in here. Now these have too little in here. So I left this last bit for us to try to do on camera. So I'm gonna prop this up and wish me luck to demonstrate this. So here's what we're gonna do. I've got pins here, I'm gonna take them out. and trying to do this without Jim. He was a great help. So I have the beads in a, just a picture like this. I want to make no breezes. And then I'm just going to dump these in. These things, I think they spontaneously germinate, reproduce at night <laughs> because after we cleaned them up, we came out the next day and there were still some more on the floor. Okay, so I'm trying to get the feel for this, if this is about enough. And yes, it is because I'm going to need to turn some down. We also learned to keep this top pinned, otherwise they just go sailing. So I'm going to pin this one. And then I will open the next section and we'll try to get those filled. Two pins to come out. And again, no breezes. I filled this pitcher outside and there's now quite a few heading over to the neighbor's house on the wind that's out there today. They are going to wonder where those came from. So these are tricky to work with and they just get all over the place. Two inches, two inches. I think that's probably about right. I have been thinking about alternatives to these beads and I think uh, probably quilt batting might work. A blanket would not be as good, but if it has that loft, lofting of the um, 
I, I guess it's, I don't know what kind of material it is that they make quilt batting out of. I've used it hundreds of times over my lifetime. I don't even know what it's made of. Looks kind of like angel hair, old fashioned angel hair. But of course it isn't because that was spun glass. Okay, so this is way low. And I bet you could, I bet you could use quilt batting as well. You just need something that is really a good insulator. All right, this one is a little thinner than the others. It's gonna be a little trickier. Nobody breathe. This, the um, static electricity that gets on these things, they really do move as if they are alive when you're trying to chase them down or around on the counter. And I'm spilling some. See that. There's probably one more. And as we as I was sewing these up the other day when we were making this. There is just no way to avoid those little styrofoam beads from getting underneath the needle on the sewing machine. And so you go over these little bumps all the time. So it's quite an exciting experience sewing these up. Okay, this is just right. So I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine, quickly sew that seam, and then um, I will be right back and we'll be ready to start the bread. Oh, so this just took me about five minutes to do. We had a few escapees, I can tell you. They're all over the floor over there. But this is now ready. Before we get started on the bread, I do want to show you this bag of styrofoam beads that I used for the Wonder Bag. This is called a Bean Bag Refill. I bought it on Amazon. It's a Big Joe. Um, and it was about $20. Let's get started on the bread. So this is my regular um, bread. Well, it's the artisan bread. It's this bread, and you've seen those in many of our uh, videos, I'm sure. I feature these in a lot of the pictures that we do. And they're made, they rise in these little baskets. So this is a pre-ferment called Poolish. I make a double batch of this every Saturday, which makes four baskets or four of these loaves. So today what I'm going to do is split this in half and I'm going to make one that fits in the basket and then I'm going to cut the other side in half and fit those down in these two. These are called Bain Marie pans right here and um, these are the, the pans that you see down in the um, in salad bowl that hold the sliced olives and the whatever else is in here and so these are going to be great for making bread. You can also use 46 ounce juice cans. Um, you need something with fairly straight sides so the bread can come out easily. I was able to use pint jars in my experiment met, in my experimenting because they have straight sides as well. Um, but one of the troubles with the 46 ounce juice cans that pineapple juice come in and that sort of thing is that they rust quite easily and you'd have to replace them. Now I started this bread last night. It takes very, very little yeast. Which, and it ferments all night long, which is great. And you can use for making bread in a Wonder Bag any bread recipe that you would like to use. Use your favorite, use one that you are familiar with. This is one that right now I am very familiar with. And so um, this takes a little bit of a different uh, process right here. Uh, for a regular recipe, what you would want to do is make sure that you let it rise once and then um, instead of allowing it to rise the second time, you, that's when you would put it in here. Um, so I'm just going to take my little bench knife and cut this in half. And I'm going to set this aside for these and I'm just going to quickly do this one for this basket. 
Okay, we're going to set this aside, <clears throat> let it rise its second time, and now we're going to work with these. Okay, so first thing I'm going to need to do is to lightly oil the inside of these to take my spray oil, cooking spray it's called, and just make sure that everything is well sprayed. Okay. And then once again, I'm going to take this and cut it in half because these will be a little bit smaller than my regular lobes are. And these don't even need to be worked with a lot. I'm just going to kind of fold them under and then I'm just going to drop them down inside. Um, other people don't even do that much work. They just drop them inside. I kind of like to fold in the tail ends. All right, this is what these look like. I'm going to cover these with foil. Okay, so these are now uh, ready to go, and when you looked inside, you noticed that the bread dough was probably just a little bit less than half, and that's about exactly where we want it, is a little bit less than half. I'm cut, I've covered it with foil um, to help uh, keep the temperature a little bit more constant in there. Now, when I let these rise in the basket, it takes about an hour and a half. So we don't have to do that with these. This is going to be a different style of bread, same dough, but different style of bread. And they're going to be going in this pan. And so I'm going to just set them down in the pan. You can see how they look there. And then I'm going to put hot water in the bottom of the pan, about three inches high. And this is what you will do with your own recipe of bread as well. Um, and so after there's about three inches in the bottom, I'm going to put the lid on and we're just going to leave it just exactly like this until they have risen until they are about double. And this would be the same procedure for any recipe of bread. You can use any recipe of bread here. So we're going to um, stop the video now while this rises and then we will come back when we're ready to start the processing and I think you're going to be really surprised about what the next step is. So we'll see you in a bit. We're ready for the next step and before we get there I want to run through a couple of things first because the process now is going to deviate greatly from how we make this bread. So let's take a look at this bread for just a minute. This is a loaf that we got out for breakfast this morning when my son and his wife were here, so we've eaten half of it. But notice the beautiful crust on this and how nice and brown this is. This takes a lot of energy to get it here. Right now I have my oven preheating to 460 degrees. In that oven are two Dutch ovens and they have to get super, super hot on the inside too. And then we cook this bread, we bake this bread, the other three loaves that I have over there waiting, we will bake those in the oven and it just takes an, an amazing amount of energy. Now the difference between this bread and this bread is that the amount of energy is going to be substantially reduced, greatly, greatly re reduced. So let's talk about that for just a minute. And because we have to reduce the energy in order to use this cooking method, then there are also going to be some other changes in the bread that we already need to be preparing ourselves for. First of all, we are not going to, um, right now what we're going to do, the next step on this is we're going to put this on the stove and we're going to boil it for 10 minutes. And the bread is still in here, in the water. Notice that these are a little bit floaty. I might want to put a weight on those to kind of weigh them down. The reason that we want to put 
this on the stove and boil the water for um, 10 minutes is to get everything as hot as we can. I've put rubber bands around the foil so no steam can get inside. We don't want any water or steam inside of where the actual bread is. And the bread has risen uh, to about three-fourths of the way to the top. So we're going to get everything hot, hot, hot for 10 minutes of boiling. And then we're going to put it in our new Wonder Bag. Now once it goes in that Wonder Bag, we don't add any more energy. So what is that going to mean? No browning. There, the crust... Well, it, there won't be a crust. It will be white all around, crustless bread. It will be completely done on the inside. It will taste almost the same as this bread does, but it will look very, very different. So we are now ready to go to that next step. I'm gonna put this on the stove and boil it for 10 minutes. I'll bring you back when we're ready then to put it in the Wonder Bag. So see you in a minute. All right, it has been 10 minutes and that pan is very hot. You may even be able to see the steam rising. So I'm gonna turn it off and I'm going to bring it over. And it's important that it stays level on this top pillow. Okay, and we're not gonna open this. We want all the heat to be saved as much as possible. Next step is to bring the, this piece, turn it this way. And we're going to wrap it, making sure that the bottom edge is completely sealed all the way around. And because, remember, this one doesn't quite meet in the back, I'm going to put this bungee cord around about right here. Okay, then I'm going to tuck this in as much as possible and get the other piece. It will go over the top. Oh, I need to show you the gap. There's the gap. Because this was made for really a smaller pan, but we've got it covered. So this part is going to be the lid. And then this part is going to come down over that side that is not quite together. And I'm going to take another bungee and put around everything. Okay, make sure we don't have any gaps. And we are set. And we'll leave it like this for probably three hours. It probably will take three hours. Turn it around oh. so they can see it. So Here here's we. the back side. Jim giving me prompts from behind the camera. I'm glad he did. Okay, so we're set. We'll be back in three hours when our bread should be done. So see you then. The moment of truth is here. It has been three hours and 10 minutes. Now in the past four hours, I've had my oven on 460 degrees for four straight hours to bake those three loaves of bread. Now compare the energy consumption between those three loaves of bread and these that we're going to open in a minute, hopefully they will be done. That took 10 minutes of energy to, well, it probably took about 15 minutes of energy to boil that water for 10 minutes. So let's see what the results are. Boy, it's still quite hot. Still very hot. Did you, I hope you were able to see that steam. So it is really holding its temperature very well. Okay, now because these haven't baked in the oven, they're not super hot, but they are a little bit warm. Okay, this is what this looks like. And notice that it's all the way up to the top, and this is done. I'm gonna get, it's just not quite cool enough for me to handle on my own. So here we have our first loaf. So they look anemic, I know, but they are completely done. So we can have little round pieces of toast or butter or whatever. And considering the energy difference, 
perhaps we can adjust to the whiteness of this bread. At least we now know that in a, in a, a pinch where we're without electricity, oh, this one came all the way to the top. that uh, on our little butane stove, we might be able to boil it for 10 minutes and then use this for, okay, I'm gonna have to get in here with this knife. Too big of a knife. That we would be able to go ahead and cook bread if we needed to in an em energy crunch or a power outage, we could actually with 10 minutes on our little butane stove, have a couple of loaves of bread that could last us for a while. A little damp on the bottom. I don't think, I don't know how any water would have gotten in there, but this is a little damp on the bottom. You can probably see that glistening a little bit. So I will probably just cut this off and toss it, because I do want to see the condition of the bread on the inside. Yes, that's still really gooey. I don't know how that got wet. But here's how the bread looks like on the inside. And it's completely baked through. So this will, this will work. It will be wonderful. So this was a successful experiment and we now have a larger um, operation here that we can do wonder bag cooking for larger quantities and bread. So thank you for joining us. This has been fun and we will see you at our next video.